Hello everyone, Freak here. I wanted to make a video on what we know so far about Runes Reforged. For those who don't know what it is at all, Runes Reforged is a big uh, sort of meta game systems change to the, the pre-game of League of Legends. Um, imagine all the runes and mastery points that you know and will probably don't actually love in League of Legends. Well, they're all getting replaced by what you see on your screen right here. Uh, these my first rune page, resolve, inspiration, keystone rune, greater rune, what is this? Well, it's condensing the 60 rune and mastery points down to 6 to 8 based on your definition of what a point is. Um, why is this happening? Why, why, why are the runes and mastery changes even coming in here? Why are we replacing everything? Uh, what it comes down to is basically creating interesting choices. It's to, it's to concentrate power into fewer choices so that each selection matters more. So that... You know, theoretically, in the current rune system, you could choose to run eight or nine armor seals, and it's not a very compelling choice. Realistically, in most cases, all the seals are the same. Why bother even having nine? And then from there, they're still pretty boring because that's just nine flat armor, and you can choose nine flat armor or some scaling health. And I mean, I guess that can be compelling based on matchup, but uh, the idea is that these aren't really very interesting choices. And so uh, the goal is to give you more concentrated but more interesting choices that you're actually doing cool things. Uh, what's also nice is that they're going to be entirely free. Uh, you have all of them essentially unlocked from the start. And you can go run around and, and try things out from the very beginning. Uh, so much more like the mastery system is right now. And in fact, Runes Reforged is going to look a lot like present day masteries. They're called runes. Don't let that fool you. They're kind of both combined into one. Um, okay, so, so what's going on here? Um, well, I want to introduce, introduce you to three words. A path, a slot, and a rune. And, and basically these are further narrower terms. So a path is something like resolve, right? The resolve path. Um, in present day terms, this would be things like um, the ferocity tree or the cunning tree in masteries. It's now the resolve path or the inspiration path. Um, as you can see here from the screenshot, and we're going to show one of the other mockups that looks a little bit prettier. Um, you get to pick two paths per game. Uh, there are five paths. You pick two of the five. You can pick any two of the five. Um, again, in mastery terms, you would normally pick two of the three, and, and sometimes three of the three. Uh, now you've got five choices, and you pick exactly two of them. Um, so you pick two paths. A primary path, you can see, has four slots. And a secondary path has two slots. Um, your primary path also has a keystone slot, or, or a keystone rune. And these are very, very similar to the keystone masteries you see in present-day League of Legends with Thunderlord's Decree and, um, you know, Grasp of the Undying and Fervor of Battle. Those are very similar. And in fact, you're going to see, as we introduce them throughout this video, um, some of them are literally the exact same keystone, or they're very, very close to it. Um, basically, what this comes down to is you pick a primary path, you get four runes in that path. You pick a secondary path, you get two runes in that path. So um, if you consider picking a path to be a choice, then you've got eight choices. Um, or if you just consider picking the runes, then you've got six. Either way, it's condensed. Um, now, what else does this mean for League of Legends? Well, um, the designers have already said there are going to be base stat changes based on the champion. So, you know, Master Yi is probably getting some attack speed at level one. Uh, and Singe is probably getting some armor and MR and ability power, you know, stuff like this. Uh, Syndra is getting some ability power. Uh, and that's going to be, you know, determined based on the champion. You know, I'm sure like a lot of marksmen are getting the same tools and a lot of tanks are getting the same tools, but uh, I assume there's some wiggle room based on what champions actually need. Um, there's also going to be some bonus stats you're seeing uh, under the word inspiration in the top right. There's this bonus column. Um, that's going to be more bonus stats based on which two trees you choose, uh, seemingly based on the primary tree. Um, this means like if you go the precision, sorry, not tree, but path, if you choose the precision path, they said you'd probably get bonus attack speed. Uh, resolve path probably means like health or armor or MR or something like this. Uh, don't know exactly. Uh, not all that's been released, but uh, you're getting stats back in some way. So it's, you know, kind of cheating and giving you the old runes and it's giving you again, these six to eight choices based on everything else. Um, cool. I assume there's room for like different stats to be granted based on the secondary or like different amounts of it. That's not really been confirmed or denied anywhere. So I don't know for sure. Um, they've also said that they're planning on potentially adding new starting items, uh, such as a Doran's Dagger was teased. 
this may or may not come true. They said they're trying it. A lot of things get tried and don't pan out. You know, we'll see. Um, also, things like the jungle, since everyone no longer has nine armor at level one uh, or, you know, three attack speed quintessences, it's possible the jungle gets changed up in its just actual power of the camp so that, uh, you know, or it's just the jungle starting items get stronger. I don't know exactly, but, you know, there's going to be, um, as a direct result of runes and masteries becoming runes reforged, there's going to be some numbers changes to, you know, champions, starting items, the jungle, who knows exactly what, but there's going to be some changes. Now, when's it coming out? When is Runes Reforged going to happen? Well, um, last year, the preseason patch for the 2017 changes was 6.22. So if we assume nothing changes, then 7.22 is going to be the change. As of recording this video, we are on 7.17. So that's five patches, meaning about 10-ish weeks. So two and a half months is early November. So yeah, probably early-ish November is a decent estimate. That would be right after Worlds ends, which is also usually when the preseason patch comes out, so that people who are playing at Worlds, people who are watching Worlds, are seeing kind of the same game as the one they're playing at home. That seems kind of useful as well. So yeah, I'm going to guess probably early mid-November, probably about 722, and the world will shake up. Uh, there will most likely be a lot of balance fallout as a result. Right? How easy is it for Kale to get 35 CDR? I don't know. Does Singed have access to the same move speed as before? I don't know. Uh, you know, can Nautilus jungle as well as before? I don't know. And you know, there's likely to be some fallout with all these changes, but that's what it comes down to. Okay, so we've got paths, we've got slots, we've got runes, and we know what's kind of happening. Let's get into the actual nitty gritty of what's happening. What's been announced so far? Here is everything we know about the Resolve Tree so far in public play. Uh, now, I don't know, or maybe I do, either way, it doesn't matter, um, what this is going to look like exactly, but I took their mock-up and I added the runes that we have seen announced so far in the game. Uh, so this is the Resolve Tree. The Resolve Tree, oh, and I want to point out, by the way, um, that again, you're seeing it's a keystone, a greater rune, two lesser rune slots. Uh, and again, they've announced that there's going to be five paths, and it's going to be roughly 60 runes. Well, that math is really easy. There's roughly 12 runes per path. Uh, which means there's roughly three runes per slot. This could change. There could be four. There could be two. There might be 63 runes. I don't know, and I'm not here to speculate, uh, but there's going to be roughly three per slot. Uh, and again, four slots per path. So here's what we know so far about the resolve tree. And once again, you get to pick one of the three uh, per path or uh, per slot. So uh, Resolve has seen two keystones be announced. The one on the left is called Ruined King's Tribute. And the tooltip reads, every four seconds in combat, your next attack deals damage to nearby champions and large monsters. Okay, so it affects the jungle and it works in lane against champions. Um, equal to 3% of your max health. Okay, cool. And heals you for 20 to 75% of this damage based on level. Uh, for ranged champions, the damage and healing are halved. So this is very much like Grasp of the Undying from League of Legends. As I mentioned before, a lot of the keystones are getting ported, uh, but it works in the jungle. So Nautilus can use this to, you know, do 4% of his max health to Krugs. Um, it affects large monsters and champions. I assume it'll affect epic monsters too. Don't know for certain, but I assume so. And it's based on 3% max health, which is very similar numbers. And it heals you for... Uh, that amount. Uh, I didn't say damage, the tooltip says amount. Okay, uh, and of course, any of these numbers and mechanics could change, but you have an AoE Ruin King, or an AoE Grasp of the Undying, which sounds like a pretty cool keystone, and it also feels slightly stronger than, um, than the one currently in the game, so power level up a little bit. The second keystone, the one to the right of that, is called Guardian Soul, and it says you can right-click an ally anytime you want to mark them briefly. Uh, there's like a cooldown in here as well. Uh, and then a shield will trigger if they take damage while marked. And the shield affects both you and your teammate. So now you have an on-active shield. You basically have Face of the Mountain as a keystone. Um, or Tarek W as a keystone. Uh, you right-click to, uh, uh, you know, grant the buff. And the shield triggers when, when they get hit by something. So, you know, 30-second cooldown. I don't know. Whatever it ends up being. Um, but one of the other keystones, right? So you can see that the Resolve Tree uh, clearly can buff up a... Um, you know, a, a fighter tank, like let's say you're playing top lane Nautilus or whatever, uh, but it can also grant a shield to a teammate, like if you're playing Braum in the bot lane. Uh, it seems based on the description that you can't give it to yourself, so it literally does nothing in a 1v1, uh, but it's a really good defensive tank 2 on 2 keystone, or if you want to bring in a defensive shield as a jungler, um, you can do that by, you know, showing up to your teammate giving them a shield as well. That sounds pretty cool. So those are the keystones that have been announced. 
And they've also announced uh, two of the uh, lesser rune slots. So the first one, <clears throat> which is the, the higher of the two, are Stone Skin, Fortified Mind, and Discipline. Uh, stone Skin is five armor plus two per nearby enemy champion, so five to 15 armor. Uh, Fortified Mind is the exact same for MR. It's five to 15 MR based on nearby enemy champions. And Discipline uh, does literally nothing until 10 minutes. And then from the 10 minute mark on, it's 10 armor and MR plus two per nearby enemy champion. So it's 10 to 20 armor and magic resist after 10 minutes. So this, you know, feels much more simplistic, right? You have, if you go into resolve, you have the choice of taking just a simple stat boost, all right? Uh, if I'm picking resolve, I'm a tank of some kind, either offensive with Rune King's Tribute or defensive with Guardian Soul. And I also have the ability to get early armor, early magic resist, or be greedy, have none, but then have both for late game team fights. Um, so you're kind of, you know, which one do you want? Which one do you want? Or do you want to go greedy? Um, that's kind of cool. That's a, you know, decently interesting choice. It's not the most complex, but um, a lot of the non-keystone, non-greater runes tend to be a bit uncomplex. Rune slot two uh, has Essence Thief, Don't Panic, and Panic. Uh, so Essence Thief is just simply uh, the way the number was listed is one health, uh, permanently one max health per nearby enemy minion that dies. You don't have to last hit them. So you know, in a, in a long game, you're getting maybe up to 500 max HP over the course of the game. Again, no early power, right? At level four, there have been maybe 30 minions killed around you. This means almost nothing. Um, but by late game, you have 500 more health, so you can just slowly scale up into more HP. And this would work if you're a top laner or a, or a support or whatever. And heck, you can even potentially run this as a marksman, you know, some kind of carry role and just have extra health by the end game. That feels pretty good. Uh, Don't Panic reads... 5% uh, bonus shield and heal power. And this uh, bonus is then doubled on uh, to 10% uh, on low health targets. And by low health, they mean 40% or less HP. So this feels uh, almost more like a, a small version of Windspeaker's Blessing in a sense, right? You just you get some healing and shielding power. It's very safe. Uh, probably works on you as well. If you're a self-healer like Nidalee, that feels good. If you're Lee Sin, you shield yourself for more. Not that you're necessarily going to run this, but you could. Um, you know, probably works on Gragas and stuff as well. And you just have better self-healing. Okay, that feels kind of nice. And, and of course, if you're playing a Janna or Soraka, this feels like you're really likely going to be doing this. But you have to choose between getting this 5% or 10% shield heal power or getting a bunch of max HP so that you're not as tanky or not as squishy. And then Panic um, reads, uh, you gain, I think it's 10% move speed towards enemies that you crowd control um, or near allied that have been crowd controlled. And the range is like a thousand or something. I forget the exact numbers. But basically, if you're like Nautilus or Leona and you cast your ultimate long range, you suddenly gain a whole bunch of move speed for quite a while to run forward in the team fight. And if you're playing, you know, a Janna or something and your Kog'Maw gets slowed or stunned by Renekton, you can catch up to them a bit more easily and grant them that shield in time. And again, so I either, you know, can follow up on guys that I've slowed or hit with CC. Uh, I can shield people for more or I just gain more selfish stats. So that's the rune slot. And you've got to pick one of the three. Cool, let's move on to the next tree then. We've got the Inspiration, sorry, not tree, but next path, the Inspiration Path. The Inspiration Path is kind of interesting. Um, it was described in one of the forum posts uh, as the gameplay is that users seek indirect power through creative tools at the expense of direct damage. It's intended to be a player type or preference uh, rather than a function or class situation. Uh, this player type is interested in indirect power because it lets them express mastery in novel or unique ways. Nothing in here directly deals damage or grants you damage dealing power. However, there may be indirect contributions to DPS such like cooldown reduction, but again, nothing direct. So Inspiration all has really cutesy tools. Um, now these rune slots are not perfect. Uh, the, the only slot that was actually properly introduced was the Keystone and Greater runes. Um, I just kind of shuffled the other ones around. I don't know if they're in the same slot or not. Uh, so the first keystone, the one on the far left, is Hextech Freeze Ray. It creates a slow field when you auto-attack someone. That slow is higher if you're melee. Um, fairly low cooldown, but it basically gives you a, uh, a frozen mallet slash iceborne gauntlet on a cooldown. Um, also, if you damage someone or slow someone, I forget. But if you hit someone in some way with an active item... Um, <clears throat> at least just hit them with an active item, it creates an even larger slow field. So if you like protobelt in, I think, it creates like an Iceborne Gauntlet slow zone. So, okay, cool, I run a keystone that lets me get a lot of slows. Uh, now again, you only get one keystone, you have to choose to go for this and not uh, the upgraded Grasp of the Undying, Ruin King's Tribute, but that would be the choice there. 
Now, the one to the right is called Summoner Specialist. You can replace your Summoner spells in game. There's all mechanics around basically when you use your Summoner spell, you gain some kind of a currency that you then spend at the shop to replace your Summoner spell. Um, it in right now it inherits the cooldown of what the slot already was. So like if you TP and then come back to lane, or you know, and then you know replace that that teleport, it has the remainder of whatever that five minute cooldown was. But if you like ignited someone and then switch it out, you know, it's it's coming off of a three and a half minute cooldown. So uh, you probably bring low cooldown summoners into the game, use them at the start, and then you can bring back your your, your flash or teleport or whatever. Seems to be what the situation is with this. It also right now, as far as the uh, as far as the description of the forum was concerned, it also grants fifteen percent CDR to your summoners in general throughout the game. So you've got um, you've got quick summoner spells that you can constantly churn through and keep switching throughout the game. And again, the the primary choice here is the opportunity cost. Uh, and that summoner spells summoner specialist doesn't make anything you do better. Just well, you can run exhaust instead of ignite if the situation changes, but the other guy still has Bruin King's tribute, and that's kind of the hope of making this balanced. I've seen a lot of like very negative reaction to this being overpowered, and I don't see it personally, but you know who knows. Uh, the greater rune slot was also announced here. Uh, so we're going from left to right. Uh, the big yellow one is called Channel Blink, and it says while Flash is on cooldown, it is replaced with Channel Blink. Uh, channel for two and a half seconds to blink to a new location, and the range is about the same as Flash. Cooldown of twenty seconds. And it goes on a 10 second cooldown when you enter champion combat. So cannot be used in combat. You've got to channel it. If you get hit, you go on champion combat. So it goes on cooldown right away. But basically you must bring flash, which is fine because most people do. And then when it's on cooldown, you have a channel version of flash, which again, you can't use in team fights. And because of the channel duration, you certainly cannot, um, you know, clear large gaps in fights. It's not like it's, you're going to add movement speed in any certain way, but it would allow you to like, Okay, they're going to try to take Dragon, and I want to steal it. I'll channel Blink over the wall and hope this might steal there. And, you know, we'll see if that can happen for me. You know, could happen. Who knows? Or you can, you know, if a Blast Cone is down, you can jump over the, the Drake wall or the Baron wall or the Krug's wall anyway and keep going on your merry way. So there's probably fun pathing things you can do with channel Blink. And this is a, a greater rune. You can only pick one of the three within the slot. Uh, the one in the middle is called Perfect Timing. Uh, this is the greater rune second rune. Start the game with a commencing stopwatch that transforms into a stopwatch after six minutes. Uh, a stopwatch is a new consumable seemingly added to the game that is a one-time use Zonia's Hourglass consumable. Uh, once you use it, it becomes a broken stopwatch, can't be used anymore. You only get to use one until you actually buy yourself a Zonia's Hourglass or a Guardian Angel. Um, this, By taking this rune in this slot, in this path, uh, it reduces the cooldown of Zonia's Hourglass and Guardian Angel by 15%. So you grab a one-time use Zonia's for use at level 6 onwards, or minute 6 onwards, and then when you finally do upgrade to Zonia's or Guardian Angel, those are now on shorter cooldowns. 15% of the 2 minutes is like 102 seconds, something like that. It's like a minute 42 or something. So, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, you you basically, you know, you could have gone for this resolve tree here, right? And, you know, pick whatever runes were in this. You could have gotten free armor, free magic resist, but instead you choose to get an early Zonia's Hourglass active, and now your Zonia's is forever going to be on a shorter cooldown when you do finally buy the item, right? Outplay tools. I've actually play tested this rune as Cassidy, and it felt great. I had like a level seven outplay on a Zach who like tried to slingshot me, and I was like, no, I'm just going to Zonia's, and then when I came out of it, I can like riff walk away, and, you know, it saved me more than 10 MR ever would have. Uh, so definitely this is pretty cool. And then the one on the far right is called Store Credit. It says you can enter debt to buy items. The amount you can borrow increases over time. Your debt limit is 150 plus another five per minute. So, you know, 10 minutes in, you can go 200 gold into debt. Um, but it does cost you 50 gold uh, to go into debt at all. So if you want to buy an Infinity Edge at 3,000 gold instead of 3,400, uh, you can do that. You just have to work off an extra 50 gold into debt. Um, I've seen a lot of people say really negative things about this one from playtesting, uh, but this actually is really, really good because you get a power spike early. I played a Gangplank game with this where um, I rushed a Trinity Force early and then got into a team fight right away with a Trinity Force power spike. And I was at negative 250 gold wielding a Trinity Force, popping barrels in a team fight that we went like a three for one in. So certainly there was a, we wouldn't have had the fight go the same way if I was just sitting on a, a Sheen and a Stinger and a Phage without the extra bonus damage and stuff. So I uh, definitely is some power here in that one. And again, these are all runes that just, it's all situational power. <clears throat> they also, uh, 
mentioned three of the lesser runes, and I do not know if these are going to be in the same uh, slot or not. I put them down randomly. Uh, the one on the left, uh, the blue with the red figure, is called the Third Path, and it says you get 100 bonus health. However, for the first 10 minutes of the game, you do 10% less damage to champions. Now, if you're Janna, you don't care, because you don't do damage to champions. This means nothing to you. You just get 100 health, period, at all times. Just You just get it. Congratulations. Uh, in fact, if you're a hard farming jungler who doesn't want to gank, like let's say you're, I don't know, playing Master Yi or something, and you refuse to gank for your teammates, you just get 100 bonus health. It's not sexy, but you just get HP forever. I mean, Braum is never going to do a lot of damage to champions, and he really wants health, actually. 100 health is a lot of health for the early game. If you're playing Braum or... I mean, Alistair does a fair decent amount of damage, but, uh, you know, there's definitely situations where I'm just like, yeah, 100 health just, like, makes me win lane. This is super free. Um, it's not the craziest thing in the world, but, hey, you know, if you're a non-damage champion, can be useful. Ivern, another great option, potentially. Uh, the one to the right of that is called Intelligence. A very simple rune. You gain 5 CDR, 5 max CDR, 5 active item CDR, and 5 to um, uh, your summoner spell CDR. So remember up here we have something called summoner spell specialist with a 15% CDR um, on summoner spells. You can stack that with intelligence, have 20%, maybe it's multiplicative, I don't know. Uh, but either way, now you've got 20% CDR on your flash. You've got a 4 minute flash cooldown now. And also your ignite is down to like, I don't know, 2 minutes and change. Um, yeah, it's, it's now under three minutes now uh, for like Ignite or Exhaust or whatever. So you've got very fast turning summoner spells that you can then keep swapping out during the game uh, for whatever makes the most sense at the time. Are you carrying? Great, you can bring out Barrier for a little while. Done with Barrier? Fine, bring out Ignite to get the all-in power. Um, and you can kind of build some self-synergies here. You don't have to, but you can. There's also another uh, rune that I'll introduce later in this video that gives you more active item CDR. Um, Azale played a Sona game where his redemption was like on a minute cooldown which is crazier than you actually think it is. And you already think it's crazy. It was even crazier than that. Um, so we'll introduce those later on. There's really some cool stuff out there. Uh, the final one introduced at the very bottom under Rune 2, it says Magical Footwear. You get free boots at 10 minutes, but you cannot buy boots before then. Uh, these boots grant additional movement speed. Um, and, and again, with all these runes, like the, the benefits and numbers could change. Like third path might not be 100 HP. The boots might be at nine minutes or 11. And you know maybe they don't grab move speed, they grab something else. You know, all these things are options. Channel Blink might have different channel time. You know, obviously these are all, you know, up to up to change over the course of time. But hey, if you're a champion who just like, you know, I don't buy boots for 10 minutes anyway. You know, it's not an important item for me. I'll, I'll get them later on. It's like, well, great. You can get free boots. And, and I'm actually not certain if this like literally is, oops, sorry. I don't know if they're literally the same as boots one. If you just get 300 gold for free. Um, that even have bonus move speeds, you get, you know, 400 gold for free. Or if they, like, upgrade into boots with speed, and they're, like, partway there, like, I don't know exactly. Um, but, you know, they are part of that whole boots of speed lineage. Um, seemingly, it feels like you're just getting a free item. Uh, so, you know, at 10 minutes, gain 300 gold. Not a bad thing. Uh, I mean, the third path is, you know, gain 260 gold worth of health forever, and then you lose the drawback at 10 minutes. So, you know, they, they do kind of similar things, right? They it feels like inspiration, it's all just ways of cheating the game. It's just like, well, no, you just get to blink with flash on cooling. You just get boots of speed for free. You just get to Zonia's early. It's all ways to cheat the game, but none of them give you direct power. So um, I think it's a really compelling tree and, and one of the most interesting, I think. Uh, most of the rest of these trees are much more on the nose and much more direct, but I think there's, there's definitely some really cool stuff available in inspiration. Uh, and we don't have uh, the other three runes and, and the last keystone revealed yet, um, assuming that these all stay and, and, you know, some might get cut. Who knows? The next tree that has a lot uh, announced to it is the Domination Path. Um, the general description I have in my mind for Domination is, like, it's roughly assassin -y. Uh Not exactly, um, but it's it's about control, I guess, more than anything else, right? It's, it's about um, slightly more esoteric interaction with enemy champions. So... Uh, we're going to start out with the keystone on the left-hand side, the looks like a Warwick W, and it's called Hunt of the Blood Moon. It says, channel for three seconds to activate Blood Moon's call. And this is a channel much like Edge of Night, where you can still run around, but if you, like, take damage or get CC'd or whatever, it turns off. Uh, but channel for three seconds to activate Blood Moon's call. Oh, also, you have to have Boots of Speed, at least. Uh, it's actually, the active is attached to your boots, so you can't do this at level one. You actually have to get boots at some point. Um... So, you know, you might not want to mix this with magical footwork because then you literally don't have a keystone for 10 minutes. Um, just FYI, you probably should never max those, uh, mix those two. Um, channel for three seconds to activate Blood Moon's Call and gain 35% movement speed for 15 seconds. 
Damaging attacks or abilities end Blood Moon's call, dealing 60 to 140 damage based on level, uh, plus some bonus AD, plus some AP bonus damage. Uh, so basically this, you know, turns on a Righteous Glory or Ghost or whatever. Uh, it has like a three-minute cooldown, I think was mentioned there. So you have a three-minute cooldown Ghost that then deals bonus damage on hit, which feels pretty good. Like if you're going to gank as Shivana or something, um, you know, you farm to level five, you buy your, I don't know, daggers and boots of speed, and you pop this and you go gank somebody with a bunch of bonus move speed and damage, that feels pretty good. Or, you know, your Cho'Gath, and now you have another Righteous Glory cooldown so that you can go in with this. Now you have to, again, give up your other options for keystones, but uh, actually looks really cool. You you just, you have a an, an semi-on-demand ghost to gank with. This feels very much like a jungler keystone, um, but it's not like it turns off in combat. You have to channel preemptively, but like I could see Singed Top using this, getting move speed for 15 seconds. Um, again, doesn't seem to be turned off in any way other than doing some damage to somebody. So you pop this, you get a bunch of move speed. Heck, you can pop this and then teleport, right? You can pop this, then teleport, have an extra home guard boost and charge and then do some crazy stuff. Maokai can do this too. Um, but it's, it's on demand, high move speed, which sounds pretty cool. And then, you know, some bonus damage to make it feel good in the end. But it's, again, the cooldown being three minutes means it's never going to be as good as something like Thunderlords for a pure damage situation. Speaking of Thunderlords, the one to the right of it, that purple square, is called Stormlord's Mandate. Hitting a champion with three unique attacks or abilities within two seconds deals bonus magic damage. Again, this damage is very much like Thunderlords. Um, the trigger condition, very much like Thunderlords as well, hit three unique attacks or abilities. A unique attack would be auto, 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 or auto, any damage would make it rain at all plus double up, um, basically DOTs will not trigger more than once, um, period. So you have to like do multiple things to the champion. Singe doesn't get it for free with um, Poison Trail, for example. You have to like land Poison Trail and auto and fling. Um, not that Singe would probably run this, I don't think he ever would, but for example. And it's very similar rules to my understanding, right? Deal AOE damage, cooldown is whatever it is. Um, you know, damage probably slightly higher than, than the other version, but I don't know exactly. Um, either way, you have this Keystone Rune. So, okay, in Domination, you get a very sort of generic mage E burst damage skill. You know, as an Assassin, if you're playing Talon or Zed, you have to choose. Do I want burst damage or do I want to make sure I can reach my target with a bunch of bonus move speed? I don't know. It's up to you. It's a choice. Uh, and they're hoping that, you know, these choices are actually compelling. They also uh, announced the Greater Rune slot in uh, Domination. The one on the far left is called Zombie Ward. It says, after killing an enemy ward, a friendly zombie ward is, is raised in its place. Zombie wards are invisible, last 180 seconds, and don't count toward your ward limit. So you basically get blue trinket wards whenever you kill a ward. Uh, we're going to quickly go through the rest of them because they're all, they all do the same thing. Uh, similarly, we're actually going to the far right. We're going to go to Trophy Collector on the far right. And it says, gain plus one ability power or plus 0.7 attack damage. Um, when you or a nearby ally kill an enemy champion or an enemy ward. Um, so, of course, you know, getting free uh, attack damage or AP um, is really useful um, on, on takedowns, but uh, the fact that you're getting this on wards, so you either, you either get a blue trinket ward or bonus stats when you, when you ward sweep, right? If you're playing Janna or Soraka or something, or, you know, you're running around sweeping wards out as, um, you know, Shivana jungle, whoever cares, You've got to choose, like, when I clear your wards, do I want to leave vision behind so that I can just see your entire jungle or I can see the dragon pit easily and they have to re-sweep this? Um, well, not sweep, but they have to re-clear it. Um, or just want to gain stats forever. And, you know, this is based on how much you care about both sides of this equation. Um, the one in the middle is called Watchful Poro. And it says, whenever you enter a brush, a Poro appears. It will stay behind and give you vision until an enemy champion scares it away or you enter a new brush. So basically, Watchful Poro is a free trinket ward forever. You always get one Trinket Ward that has no cooldown, uh, according to the tooltip, um, as long as you walk into a brush. And so, for example, I've played a Singed top game, I think it was Singed, um, where I used Watchful Poro, and I just, you know, I'm laning top lane from blue side, and I walk into their tri brush and go, great. Someone has to walk through this to kill this Poro Ward off. Um, now, I can't walk into any other brushes where it goes away and it goes somewhere else, so that, you know, could be a downside for me, but I can now ward their tri rush or, you know, in front of their red buff or something, and that's going to stick around until someone clears it. Um, you know, maybe it gets a duration or something at some point, I don't know, but um, great, you know, I, I, I can now put extra wards down. So they all kind of play out the same things, right? They're playing around wards in different ways. Do I want free stats? Do I want free wards? Do I want different free wards? Um, and I think those are all kind of compelling choices here. 
They also announced the Lesser Rune slot. Left to right, the first one is called Relentless Hunter, and it's gain 10 out of combat move speed per Bounty Hunter stack. Earn Bounty Hunter stacks the first time you get a takedown on each enemy champion. So it's 0 to 50 out of combat move speed um, based on assists and kills you've gotten in this game based on opponents. And they all do a very similar mechanic. Ingenious Hunter, the middle one, is 5% uh, active item CDR per Bounty Hunter stack. And stacks gain the same way. So it's 0 to 25% active item CDR. Ravenous Hunter is 2% spell vamp per Bounty Hunter stack. So 0 to 10% spell vamp. And you've got to choose, you know. Okay, well, I clearly have to either be an active item user a roamer or a, um, a, a spell vamp, uh, you know, an ability damage user. I need to spell vamp with this. Um, and, and I need to be able to get a lot of assists. Like I don't want to be an isolated top lane that only ever split pushes because it's useless. So like, you know, maybe a Riven or a top Yasuo may never grab this if they never want to rejoin their team or something. If you're playing a dedicated split pusher, like um, let's say Ivern or maybe even Singed, this might be hard. But if you're really good at getting assists like Sona, I think Sona likes 50 out of combat move speed. Sona also likes 25 active item CDR, so that her redemption has almost no cooldown. Both are good. Mikhail's on a one and a half minute cooldown. Feels pretty good as well. Um, feels actually pretty good for supports. I mean, both out of combat move speed and active item CDR, pretty good on supports, obviously. Um, but, you know, there's other places as well. Uh, this would affect your trinkets, uh, you know, almost certainly. If you're playing, you know, a Vladimir or a... Uh, any just sort of high damage mage, like even maybe an Azir or something, um, or Cassiopeia, like they might want the spell vamp. They might want 10 spell vamps so they can run around and do really cool things with this. Um, and, you know, make the choice to go into domination, either as a primary or secondary path to get spell vamp. Could be cool, right? There, there's some interesting choices there. Uh, the final uh, group of lesser runes has not been uh, released, so of course can't talk about those. Now, those are the three trees that actually had a lot of information on them. The other two have very little. Uh, Sorcery has all of its keystones announced. Uh, so the one on the far left is called Meteor, uh, and it says damaging an enemy champion with an ability hurls a Meteor at their location. If the Meteor hits them, it deals bonus damage, which the thing listed on the forums is 40 to 100 based on your level with some bonus AD and AP scaling. And the cooldown is only 20 to 8 seconds based on time. So the damage is certainly not as high as Thunderlords, um, which was almost definitely going to be much higher. In fact, it's not even the same as um, Hunt of the Blood Moon, which is about twice this. But the cooldown is between 20 and 8 seconds, so it's pretty frequent. Um, you're going to get this damage off probably several times per team fight. It seems to be AoE, but it can be dodged. But if you get this off two or three times per fight, it's quite a lot of damage. You know, the scaling's not too bad. Um, and it's just, you know, a pretty solid generic damage room. Um, because it is delayed, I've run this on Cassidy, for example, because it's delayed. If they're playing like an Orianna or the opposing team is like a Lee Sin or a Sona or something, you can get it shielded pretty easily because there's so much, there's enough delay that people can react. Um, but if you do so much damage, you break their shields anyway, then it's free damage. Um, but I've played the meteor before. It was, um, it was pretty solid. It's, it's actually not bad. Uh, the one in the middle is called Perksy. And it says your attacks and abilities send Perksy to a target. Perksy shields allies, uh, by 40 to 120 based on level with AP and AD scaling or damages enemies for 10, uh, to 40 based on level plus AP or AD. Perksy cannot be sent out again until she returns to you. Um, so it's essentially a CDR mechanic, but... Um, Perksy has some mechanic about how long it stays around the allied or enemy champion. I'm actually not sure how uh, that's calculated, so I don't know, but the cooldown is reasonably short and feels somewhat similar to Meteor. I mean, the damage is basically half of Meteor's damage, actually even less than that. Um, the fact that it's reliable, but not AoE, uh, means it's probably a you know, pretty short cooldown and a much less damage, but um, it's very, very reliable. And again, you have a choice of running it on your support. Uh, if, you know, you're playing Lulu or Janna or something and you want to give shields to people, well, you can send help picks for a shield and then Perksy does the same thing and now they have two pets. Uh, and you have ways of shielding people. The one on the far right is Spell Slinger's Surge. Hitting a champion with three unique attacks or abilities within two seconds grants 30 to 60% movement speed for three seconds. Additionally, melee champions gain 75% slow resist while active. So this is much like a Storm Raider Surge, obviously. Very similar mechanics, you know, a bunch of move speed. But instead of being keyed off of how much of their health you do, it's just landing three abilities and attacks. What this means is it actually allows tanks to reliably bring this, right? Like if you're going to play, I don't know, Scion or Singed or something, you can pretty reliably trigger this move speed. Um, you couldn't do a third of someone's health, but you can certainly, you know, Q auto E on Nautilus and gain move speed without problems. Uh, Alistair the same. In fact, if you like flash pulverize E auto attack, you've triggered Spell Slinger Surge and now you're guaranteed to, to get the headbutt behind them or something. 
In fact, you can now just trigger this in the middle of a fight and just walk up to somebody and pulverize them if you can trigger this. Um, cooldown, I'm not sure what it is, probably similar to what it is uh, in present day, which is like, what, 15, 20 seconds? That might change, I don't know. Uh, but Sorcery has very different options, right? It has a, uh, you know, damage only choice. It has a damage or shielding only, or just do you want move speed? Uh, you've got to land, you know, unique abilities, want to do so, but um, could be pretty cool. So uh, those are the keystones for sorcery, and none of the rest of the sorcery runes have been announced, so no idea what they are. Then the one, the one with the least information is precision. And precision seems to be the, uh, so sorcery is seemingly the, the sort of bursty, like very much damage focused path. Uh, they've said things like it might include a lot of attack damage and ability power, uh, as we saw from the keystones, they're mostly damage-based, or at least if you do damage, they do things. Um, precision seems to be more of the uh, long duration, like it just screams marksman to me, um, sort of path. So the keystone, and this wasn't technically announced, uh, but it's really obvious. Uh, Berserk is a um, precision keystone. Uh, I guess it's a leak, but I mean, it's so obvious, how could it not be? Um, Berserk says, three seconds after damaging a champion, you go Berserk, which grants you 60% attack speed for three seconds. You can extend the effect to 10 seconds by attacking an enemy champion during that duration. Berserk also lets you transcend the attack speed cap. So no matter what you're building, you can then go Berserk, basically hit someone, wait a little bit of time, and then get into a fight, and you'll, you'll you know, have really high attack speed. I've used it before. I use it on Jinx. Um, the, the cooldown is actually really short um, between usages. Basically, like, you fight someone, you trade a little bit, and you're like, okay, you know, they got hit by Rocket Splash or something, right? Uh, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm Berserk. Within three seconds, if I start a fight, if I do start a fight, I just have more attack speed than you. So, like, it, you know, and I was against someone who's using a different keystone for me, a uh, different keystone room, and I was landing this, so I'd, like, hit them and be like, oh, you know what? Let's let's all in. I have Berserk active. Let, let's just fight. I have so much attack speed. Like, I'm guaranteed to win, you know, this two-on-two. -two, let, let's go start something, and I can force them back with this. And I have this, like, constant window of, like, I gained bonus attack speed. You better watch out against me. And it was kind of fun. I had to still prime it, right? If I get all in by a Leona, I'm sitting there at normal attack speed for three seconds, at which point the fight's probably ended, um, and I might not get to use it. So it actually had some nice windows of power, um, but... You know, that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, none of the other precision keystones have been announced, but, um, you know, you can assume that they might be uh, very marksman-focused. Uh, they might also be allowable for, like, high DPS mages, like if you're playing, like, a Cassiopeia, I'm not sure. Um, but this one is very much exactly for marksmen, uh, which, and with all the sorcery runes being announced, it made it pretty obvious this was a precision mastery, or sorry, a precision keystone rune. Uh, also, one greater rune slot was announced, which was Bloodlust, which is very much like Dangerous Game, but it's takedowns, which is kills and assists. Restore 15% missing health. So, okay, 50% missing health. Wow, okay. Uh, that's a lot. So if I if I win that bot lane all in with, you know, my Berserk attack speed or whatever, I've healed for like a solid like 100 or so HP, and now I can survive the Sona trying to hit me back. That feels pretty good. It's just a stronger version of Dangerous Game, uh, which is, again, what they've been kind of saying is that these runes are going to be slightly stronger than their uh, than the similar masteries were in, in the olden days, in 2017 and, and prior. So... Um, you're looking at a slight increase in overall power because you're only getting six of them instead of, you know, 30-ish points. Uh, there's also a few other runes that were announced where we don't know what path they're in. Uh, I don't know if they're greater runes or lesser runes. I'm just putting them down so that you can see what they are. Uh, that top orange shield is called Overheal. And the tooltip read, Excess healing becomes a decaying shield for up to 10% of your total health. By excess, by excess healing, it means things like Spell Vamp, uh, life steal. Actually, the fountain counts. I've play tested this one. Um, that might not stay. I don't know. Uh, or like getting a direct heal from like a Soraka or you know Wish or something. Um, again, it's a decaying shield, so it doesn't stay forever. So even though you could get it off the fountain, if you walk the top lane, it generally runs out by that point. But you know, could feel good on Fiora. Could feel good on uh, Jinx of the Bloodthirster. Could feel good to just have a Soraka on your team. You go, you know, I fixed something else in this in this slot. But you know, it turns out that yeah, you know, I, let's have Sona keep me at at 1.1x max health at all times that feels good or you know i'm actually gonna buy blade of the ruin king first in this champion i'll run this and then i have 1.1 1. 1, you know 1.1x by max health um as long as i can life steal up to it you know feels pretty good you can probably buy a bloodthirster and stack the two of them just have a lot of shields um you know if you have a teammate with a relic shield on same thing happens right that's i mean it's only 15 health but hey it's something right that can matter or if, if bond of stone still exists that health can matter ardent sensor etc so uh, you know, situational, you might want to run overheal because of that. 
Uh, the next one down, the one in the middle, under Rune 1, is called Overcharger. And it says gain 1% CDR per level up to 10% at level 10, where it stops. Each percent of excess CDR above your cap is converted to 2 ability power or 1.4 attack damage which is very interesting because now you can choose to like say, well, I'm going to play Echo uh, and I'm going to get a Proto Belt and a Zonia's and a Banshee's Veil and cooldown boots and I'm going to run this mastery and, you know, I'm just going to buy a Relanomicon because they have Moon to win the game and, wow, I have like 80% CDR. Okay, well, that extra 40 CDR turned into 80 ability power. And none of those items were troll. So, you know, I can, I, you know, I can, I can be CDR capped by Lucidity Boots and they just read 20 AP, 10% summoner cooldown. Do, do I want that or Sork Shoes? I don't know necessarily, but I can make that choice. Um, Merlin Amicon can just read, what is it, 100 AP plus then 40 more. It's just 140 AP item. So if you want to like build a high AP CDR, it's now a build enabler. You can now do this and gain, you know, some percentage of bonus AP. And as we saw in one of the earlier, um, in one of the earlier runes, there's one that gives you 5% CDR and 5% cap CDR. I mean, if you're going to go to 40, you might as well go to 45, which is, of course, a, a great, you know, damage increase. And now, okay, well, I'm going to run this uh, alongside Inspiration. Now, unless Overcharger and uh, Intelligence are in the same um, slot, in which case you can't stack them, you have to choose which one. But, I mean, even that would be compelling. So, you know, you get 5 for free or you get up to 10 and then you get some fun scaling alongside it. Who knows? Um, you know, I could see either one being true. Uh, the one in the middle is called, or sorry, the one at the bottom is called Perfectionist. Perfectionist says, while above 80% health, so while I'm very healthy, uh, gain up to 14 attack damage or 20 ability power based on level. So, wow, if I can stay untouched, right? If they have no assassins, they're all playing just dumb frontline tanks like Scion and, um, you know, people who don't dive through me very well. So a Scion, maybe an Alistair, or I have good peel, like we've got a Morgana or a Janna on the team, and I'm pretty sure I can stay healthy. Like, great, you know, I can play Jinx or something and have plus 14 attack damage forever because I know I'm not going to get touched. It's like, well, but in this game, I'm playing Callista. Like, that's not going to happen, so never mind. You know, I'm playing Vladimir. I should never do this. Um, or, you know, they're just not going to touch me. I'm Gangplank, and I'm just going to play really far back and be safe. Then great, you have this. Um, I actually do know in the real world what slot this is on and in what, um, in what path, and there are some really compelling choices uh, against Perfectionist. Um, in, in fact, like, I had a game where I played as Perfectionist, and I go, darn, I really wish I'd pick a different route in that slot because... Uh, the way the game panned out, I really, really wish I'd switched um, because I couldn't take a perfectionist, but I really could have used the other one uh, that was in there. So there's certainly some really good choices to be had here. Um, it's it's definitely easy from from playing Runes Reforged uh, to get a lot of just like free stats. And if you want to just pick the stats layout, you kind of can, right? Like I get free boots for inspiration. I'm going perfectionist. I'm going overcharger. I'm going, you know, all these other things like you can, generally speaking, kind of do that. Um, right, there's enough ways to, to find stats in, in various paths, but um, like I said, from experience, I've had ones where I'm like, man, I wish I didn't go for the stat rune. I really wish I'd gone for something else. So there's definitely some cool stuff here. Let's put it all together. Let's say we're actually going to build a rune page together, right? I'm going to play, let's say, Janna, right? Well, you know, what kind of page can I make? Well, again, we've talked about your primary path, right? You have a secondary path as well, right? So I can go inspiration primary domination secondary right i get some kind of bonus for being an inspiration primary and that's written under the word domination there's a you know bonus is a lorem bonus we don't know what it is uh again the example given was uh, precision probably grants you attack speed for being a precision main um and i want to point out what the what the real world situation is right is a primary path gets a keystone that the secondary path does not have and a primary path gets to access the third slot um, now you can still use a greater rune in the secondary. So you can go keystone greater rune and then, you know, a greater rune in the secondary side as well. Um, for your secondary path, like that slot is not off limits. Um, but if you really wanted all three slots, you can only get all three slots if you are primary, if it's your primary path and you only get the keystone if it's your primary path as well. So you're getting, you know, twice as many options in a primary, you're getting half as many options in a secondary for pretty obvious reasons. Um, because you know, that's the balance. It's, it's, you know, pretty similar to what your mastery sheets look like, you know, in today's world. Um, but an example rune page, assuming these, again, and I made up where the third path and magical footwear are, I actually don't know, uh, actually, I don't remember, um, which slots they're on, but I'm also just gonna just assume we don't know because we don't. So I'm going to play Janna. Well, Hextech Freeze Ray, if I attack you, uh, I put a slow on, like I don't have to use my W. I can now attack for a slow and leave up Zephyr for move speed. 
Uh, I'm gonna run channel blink because my flash is gonna go on cooldown, and at some point I'm gonna need to jump over a wall, uh, you know, so that I can, uh, you know, ward their blue buff or something, or just you know to get out of cheeky jungle paths. And in fact, if if you know I'm getting chased and you know because I was warding too deeply and I get out of combat for 10 seconds, I can now flash a wall to get away. It feels pretty good. Feels like nice utility. I mean, I could have run something else in inspiration, but I chose to run channel blink. You know, maybe I want to go in debt to buy items to buy my ardent sensor or a sight stone sooner. Also would have been an option, of course. Um, all right, I'm gonna pick the third path because you know. I don't do damage champions anyway. Let's just get 100 bonus HP. Never terrible. You know, I just get more health. This is great. I can frontline a little bit better. I'm not going to get one shot. In fact, they have a Katarina. Like, I need to survive to not get one shot by her so that she can get resets off. I need to survive her all in. So 100 health is going to help me, you know, survive the assassin that's going to go for me. And, you know, again, I, I need a Sight Stone. I need to upgrade my Noah's Medallion. I need an Ardent Sensor. I need a Redemption. Like, I don't have time to buy boots. Let's just grab Magical Footwear. Um, let's, let's just grab those. That way I don't have to spend the 300 gold. Leaves me some room in my build. I'm not going to buy boots early anyway. Great. I got to cheat in a lot of ways. I can jump over walls. I get free health. I get free boots. Cool. I've got more stats than you now, and I can I can go rush my Ardent Sensor, my Redemption, my Sight, so not lose much. What's also cool is Hextech Freeze Ray. Um, again, I, unless I misread the tooltip, and maybe I did, uh, if the tooltip read um, your slowing active items put a, a, a chill zone down... Um, but I thought I read it as just your active items put a chill zone down. Uh, I'm pretty certain that's what it said. So, um, you know, if that's the case, then like redemption would would just trigger slow zones on everybody, right? And that would feel pretty good. Uh, but I, I might have misread it. I feel like I read forum posts where they were talking about like needing Rileys for Proto Belt to work. So I might be wrong about that one. But uh, either way, still pretty cool, right? I, I have on, on demand slows. And again, uh, I'm choosing my, my secondary path to be Domination. And even though Domination sounds like an assassin name, it's like, well... Uh, I have Trophy Collector. Um, if I kill a ward or I get an assist, um, I gain bonus AP as Janna. That feels great. I have stronger shields. I have stronger monsoons. This feels wonderful. Uh, that's pretty fun. I also have Relentless Hunter. Every assist I get, up to a cap of one per champion, uh, I gain 10 out of combat move speed. So now I'm, not only am I getting to skip boots, and then I get them later for free anyway, but I run super fast around the map. Like, imagine, like, like I... I I get caught out warding. Well, I have boots. They, in fact, give me more move speed than normal boots do. I have 50 bonus move speed out of combat. And if I am if I can stay out of combat, I can then channel blink over the wall. So I'm already building like 90 units per second plus more with Zephyr. Uh, I can do all these fun things, right? And I can I can break a lot of rules. And I, I can stack up AP for clearing wards. And doesn't this feel wonderful? This would be an example rune page. And what's funny is, you know, if we, if we kind of go back in time and, and think about some of the other options, like... I could have run Guardian Soul and Resolve, right? I can I can run Guardian Soul, or maybe I run Hextech Freeze Ray. But if I wanted to run, you know, a uh, Resolve primary, well, I can right click to shield someone. I can run, you know, Don't Panic or something to give bonus shield power to my teammates. If I think I can survive my laning phase, I can run, uh, you know, this this plus ten to, to twenty Arbor and Magic Resist rune right here, and you know, whatever the greater runes are, maybe that's going to be really good too, and I can get some more health, and you know, who knows what I can get out of that one. Um, could be really fun. Or I could run the Resolve Secondary, in fact. And, uh, you, you know, in this example, I was running Trophy Collector and Relentless Hunter, but I could simply run, you know, this this uh, bonus armor in lane and bonus health for nearby dead minions to grant even more health, right? I'm already going third path for bonus HP. Let's grant even more bonus HP with, with these stuff down here in the Resolve Tree. So these are the kind of things that you can do with um, with your path. Uh, I think it's going to be really compelling. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, this pretty much sums up the video at this point. I think there is going to be a lot of fun choices. I think people are going to have a lot of fun um, looking at what their possibilities could be. And it's going to be fun seeing what kind of stuff people try to do. Hopefully you enjoyed the rundown of what we know so far about Runes Reforged. And if you have any comments, uh, leave them in the description below or tweet at me. All my uh, stuff is right down below my chin. Let me know. Thanks for watching. See ya.